Let's get to our story today, folks. In Georgia, a man jailed for 26 years for the brutal killing of his sister-in-law is hoping to have his case reopened, claiming racial bias affected his sentence. But if he fails, Keith Le Le Leroy Tharp will become the second person executed in that state this year on September 26. He shot his sister-in-law, rolled her into a ditch, then shot her again before kidnapping his wife and raping her by the side of the road. He was convicted of malice, murder, two counts of kidnapping with bodily injury, sentenced to death. But because of a U.S. Supreme Court ruling this year, his attorneys are hoping to reopen the case, saying a juror's racial bias influenced Tharp's sentence. We're now joined by his attorney, Brian uh, Kammer uh, from Atlanta. Brian, um, yes, is, is your client saying he did these things? There's no dispute about his guilt in, this, uh, in, the, in these crimes. The, no, it, this, is about, this is about the death sentence. The death sentence. And correct me if I'm wrong here, you had one of these, uh, one of the jurors made a comment that essentially black people did not have souls? That's almost the least of what he said. Uh, he repeatedly, he, he, he boasted that he, you know, uh, typically used racial epithets to describe African American people, and that if people didn't like that, that was tough. Uh, he divided, he, he, he described the, uh, the victim's family as, quote, nice black folks, but Keith Tharp was, you know, de described by a race, racial epithet. Um, and that, that because of that, he deserved to be executed. Now, um, these comments were made where? In the jury room or after the trial? So they were made after the trial when when our office investigated the case, typically we will interview jurors about their experiences on the, you know, deliberating as to the facts and so forth. And during one of those interviews, uh, Mr. Gaddy expressed these very blatant, uh, racially biased views, the most, you know, very explicitly, uh, and was willing to sign an affidavit attesting to those. He, he even made corrections on the affidavit, uh, which is a sworn statement which were very explicit about his views and his use of racial epithets to describe African-American people and Mr. Tharp in particular. Uh, you know, he never, while the, the state came back at him and got, you know, an additional affidavit and there was testimony in court, uh, he never, you know, came back off of his views. Um, and the, the judge in, in our, this was a, a proceeding called habeas corpus, which is a common proceeding in capital cases. The judge refused to uh, look at the evidence because of a state law that says juror testimony that impeaches the verdict is inadmissible. So what we're doing is we're trying to uh, we're trying to use this recent U.S. Supreme Court case which says those kinds of laws cannot um, prohibit courts from considering this kind of invidious racism on the part of jurors. Brian, I know somebody listening right now, they're saying, I don't have any sympathy for this guy. He is uh, a flat out killer. Uh, okay, and, my hands up. And, so, and say deserve to die. But, uh, okay. but, the issue, but the issue here, Brian, is that there are other cases where the racial bias of jurors comes into case, comes into play. And if I'm correct, Georgia also, didn't they also have a case that went to the Supreme Court where the prosecutors were systematically removing black jurors from death penalty cases to ensure uh, they would get uh, convictions? That's exactly right. In fact, the prosecutor you're talking about is the same prosecutor who prosecuted Mr. Stark, Joe Briley. A notorious prosecutor in the, uh, you know, Okmulgee Judicial Circuit here in Georgia, who was found by the Supreme Court to to have to have essentially systematically attempted to under underrepresent uh, African American people, women, on juries, uh, without uh, making it look like they were doing that. Uh, he he authored a a memo to the jury commissioners. Uh, telling them how to do it without getting caught, and you know he's 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 notorious. He used he used uh, you know ninety percent of his what they call peremptory jury strikes, where you get to strike a juror for no reason. Uh, he used those strikes to get rid of African American jurors in the jury pools. 
uh, in the county where Mr. Tharp was was convicted. In fact, he struck five of eight African American uh, of the only uh, eight African American jurors in the jury pool in Mr. Tharp's case. So, 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 Brian, it's not that it's not that uh, the issue here is that uh, if there were black jurors on this trial, that uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, on this jury, that he conceivably uh, still would have gotten the death penalty. But is your yes, argument right, that buddy. we can't mm -hmm. have racial bias anywhere in the criminal justice system, whether the person admits to the crime or not? That's exactly right. And these cases that we're, we're talking about from the Supreme Court, they dealt with, you know, uh, murders. And all murders have very painful facts and uh, involve people who did terrible things. But we can't. We can't have these cases being decided in an environment where there's racial discrimination. In this case, it's, it's explicit. One of the jurors held the most, you know, awful kinds of beliefs uh, that you can imagine about African-American people. It wasn't the facts that, uh, you know, were really on his mind as much as the fact that Mr. Tharp was, was an African-American person. That was the deciding factor for this guy. And Tom, Are there not you know, other cases for you to use? Use all these man hours, all these man hours for somebody who is maybe innocent? <laughs> we, we represent all, uh, we, we provide representation for just about all of the, the cases in Georgia. So we, we don't pick and choose. We, we work with everybody and we do, we do uh, I believe, very qu high quality work for all of our no clients. No doubt. And, and, but, but, yeah, you do but, high quality but, but, work. But Tom, but... Tom and Sybil, let me say this. On the Supreme Court, etched mm -hmm. in stone, equal justice under law. It does not matter if we think they're innocent or guilty. The point is equal justice under law because it, today it could be Tharp who clearly did it. Tomorrow it could be somebody who didn't do it and you still have racial bias on that jury. That's I'm the issue. Saying, let's concentrate on the ones who didn't do it. No, but no, but, and, but, getting, and getting racial but Tom, bias. the reason the Supreme Court ruled is because it was in a case where the person was guilty and they said you can't use racial bias. So we can't just say only those who are innocent. That's why the Supreme Court ruled, as Brian said. And That's you right. can't help everyone. You can't help everyone, but equal we justice try. under law. We try. But, and you're certainly making a statement here. Yeah. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh, my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't going to cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out, because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.